I'm ready for more. If you fired up, I'm fired up. Don't run from rap. One, two, three. I'm ready for more. Tell them I'm ready. I'm ready for more. Game time. I'm ready for war. Tell them I'm ready. I'm ready for war. I just got 20. I'm running on empty this morning. Today, from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's week 15 of the NFL on EA Sports. Vegas Raiders taking on the Dallas Cowboys. NFL football has come to Southern Nevada as we are in the menacing new Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. The atmosphere here electric. No matter the venue, the home folks love their silver and black. They are fired up as their Raiders get set to face off with the Dallas Cowboys. again everyone alongside Charles Davis I'm Brandon Gordon and Charles we look at the Raiders here entering play they come in off a loss last time out but overall they've been playing well six wins and eight prior to that defeat meanwhile for the visitors here the Cowboys they're in a real groove of late winners of five of their last six games and if you look back to last week it was all about their defense anytime you hold an NFL team to single digits that's saying something and no run back on the opening kickoff. It'll come out to the 25. The Raiders set to go to work behind their veteran quarterback, and that's Derek Carr. Coming off of a loss their last time out, I think he's just seeking to make a bigger impact on the game. He threw a touchdown pass, didn't throw an interception. I think he just wants to jump those numbers up in terms of flinging it around and letting his receivers get into the end zone. Rep of the game for Josh Jacobs. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. To throw, it's Carr. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Well, this defense for the Cowboys, they were terrific last week in the victory over Kansas City. And they needed to be because our offense struggled throughout the game. Sometimes as a defense, you're not just shutting down the opposing team's offense, but you have to outplay their defense as well. And that's what they did in their last game. Throwing his car on third down. He's got White here. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. Now, that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together to watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right call, had the out route. He's got to know where the first down sticks are, yet he steps out of bounds that close. Not their best play. So out come the Cowboys under head coach Mike McCarthy. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. 
And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Looking to throw. Lowry. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down about a yard shy of the first at the 29. I thought they might take a shot down the field, but instead they ran a little drag route there. I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Raiders will take over now first and 10. The Raider offense heading out as we take a look at the playoff race in the AFC and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A check on the numbers a week ago for Waller. Six catches, 61 yards. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That's about as good as a linebacker can diagnose that play, isn't it? It certainly is, and what he did really well is that while he was diagnosing, he got his feet in motion without actually going anywhere and taking a false step that he had to make up later. He read it, got his feet in motion, and then he just took off and made the play. Second down, Jacobs once more. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts, being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. From the gun now on third down, Carr. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Here's A.J. Cole now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Second drive forthcoming here for the Dallas Cowboys. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guy's a little bit I jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'm trying to do better here. <laughs> They'll try again from the 20 on second and 10. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. The defense was dialed into the pass. They overlooked the draw play. And how often do we talk about the oldies are still goodies? Because that draw play comes straight from Coach Paul Brown's playbook, going all the way back to the original Cleveland Browns. So first and 10 now from the 30. 
Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 16 carries, 87 yards. And as we discovered in talking with the coaching staff prior to the game, going up against a team that struggled against the run has only emboldened them to run the football more. I expect 40 to 50 carries in this game. A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Day. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Back to throw. Lowry escaping the pressure right. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 48-yard line. And he'll give it here to his running back. He takes it down to the 42, a five-yard run. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Looking to throw. Lowry. He finds his man complete. That's Day. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he is going to wind up losing yardage here as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Cowboys in possession as they've got it second down and 12. to throw. Lowry rolling to his right. Space to run past the 20. And finally wrestled down at the 11. Come on, Jared, let's go! Now a first and 10 at the 11. Looking to throw. Lowry. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Back to throw. Lowry. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. He'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down.
looking to throw. Lowry. He finds his man complete. It's Day. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. And that big game may just change the thought process here on fourth down. I think in the red zone, they might now consider going for it on fourth down. They're going to go for it now, fourth and two. Remember, they can still get the first down at the one-yard line, though. They'll try and run for it. And not only did he not get in the end zone, he didn't get the first down either. They'll get neither the touchdown nor the first down. And it'll be a turnover on downs. A chance to get some momentum here in the second quarter, getting their first trip into the red zone, but unable to get it across. And if I'm the head coach, sure, you feel some disappointment, maybe a little bit of deflation there because you didn't get it in, but I'm going straight to rah-rah mode. All right, guys, we didn't get it this time. It's only the second quarter. We'll be back. Let's get it later on. I want to keep this team up. I want them to feel like they've let everyone down. Positive. Got to be positive in this situation. It's too early to think that you don't have a chance to win this game. Colton Miller, former first-round pick, called for the penalty there. Second down, Jacobs once more. And he's able to get him a small cushion before being taken down at the five, a gain of three. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Able to find Walter, that's complete. To get the third down conversion. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. Thanks to that last play, a little more room to operate. First and 10 at the 18. Carr going to give it to Jacobs. Gets it up around the 22 and no further. Did show some power on the run, but not a whole lot of room. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Here's a handoff to Jacobs running left. The Raiders on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Carr. be able to hang on through the contact it's incomplete the coverage strong and now it's fourth down it's always a goal and it's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion force an incompletion and force another punt and on fourth down on is the punt team sending this one away twisting away Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. And he's been busy with his feet. He's been quite the scrambling man. And obviously that can break down a defense. But a lot of it is just that they just get trapped with worrying about it so much that other things break down as well. You know, you break the huddle, and you're not just playing what comes out at you. You're like, oh, God, don't let him outside of the pocket. Don't let him beat us with his legs. And then he starts to beat you other ways. They'll run on first down. Day. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The way the game has changed a little bit is that defensive goals have changed in a big way. Nowadays, it's not so much stopping certain yardage or whatever, but it's not giving up big, explosive plays. Anything over 10 yards, you're trying to hold teams below that. When they get one against you, as we just saw there, boy, that really hurts them. It puts them back on their heels a little bit and makes them a little bit less confident. Right back to him on first down. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? 
What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. The give is to Elliott. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Back to throw. Lowry. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Max Crosby. He's the one to get him. And that is sack number seven for him on the year. So after the sack, here's second and 14. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. Holding offense. Well, I right, just called a call. We're going to play. Come on now. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Looking to throw. Lowry. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he is not going to go anywhere. They're going to get to him behind the line, and that is going to get us to the two-minute warning. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, <laughs> yes, and he's I miles am. away and smiling. And happy. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on to kick it away. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17 yard line. The Raiders now set to get the football back. They've been playing the field position game thus far. No score. Second quarter as they come up on first and 10. Here's Carr. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Leighton Van Der Esch. And he'll take this down inside the 15-yard line. If you're a lover of offense, this has not been the half for you thus far. Luckily for me, though, I'm sitting next to a lover of defense, and we have had plenty of that, including that interception. Yeah, and I mean, that still makes it a great game, doesn't it? Everybody talks about if the ball's not in the end zone and points going up on the board, it's not as much fun. I love these defensive battles. Something's got to give with these turnovers. Who can convert them into points? Throwing on first down. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options, and while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts. 
as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. The kick by Lutz is good. And we have action on the scoreboard just before halftime. It's 3-0. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. Derek Carr getting set and ready to go again on offense here. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. That catch good for only a couple. To throw again on second down. Carr toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Open man here is Gentry. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. The final shot here before half for Carr. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. So we've hit halftime, just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send you to our EA Studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, time for a sprint to the finish as it's time to get you caught up with what's happening around the NFL here in a pivotal Week 15. We'll get started up at Lincoln Financial Field in Philly, where you see the final score there. Austin Eckler, a touchdown run in the victory. From there, let's head over to Minneapolis to check on the Vikings at home at U.S. Bank Stadium. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Cincinnati Bengals. Joe Mixon, a touchdown run in the victory. Lastly, let's check in on our nation's capital to see what's happening with the Washington football team at home at FedEx Field. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Tampa Bay Bucks. Leonard Fournette, what a game. Three touchdown runs in the victory. Meanwhile, in our game, not much happening on the scoreboard. Just a lone field goal in that first half. For the call of the second half, maybe we can get a touchdown, fellas. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. The Cowboy offense set to go to begin this third quarter. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. That hold coming from the middle of the line, the center. And it's difficult for him because sometimes you've got people right over you, and as soon as you snap it, trying to get your hands up and block them, you can be a little bit late getting it done. And he stopped immediately there. Well behind the sticks here with a second and 18. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Day. And a short pickup there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. 
And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. A loss of a full three yards and now it's second down. Well, he can be a load to handle off the edge, and he can do it against the pass. Sure, he can do it against the run like he did there. And you mentioned a load. How about having to adjust to his speed as well? Because not only does he bring some pop, he brings some dash as well. A nice play in that situation. Looking to throw on second down. Lowry. And this one's incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. Now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return, and possession will switch hands first and ten. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs. But now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for the second half. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings them up second and ten. Car going to throw. He'll get this underneath to Jacobs. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Throwing now is Carr. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Here's A.J. Cole now. He's been terrific so far. Good footwork at the 30. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Dallas offense back out onto the field. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game All right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because in football nowadays, tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. On first and 10, Lowry. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he just falls short down at the one-yard line. 
A big play there on the catch and run. Oh, I think we all understand his disappointment. He didn't quite get to the end zone, and you know it's just got to be tough to see a yard line underneath you after a play like that. Still, all in all, a huge play, and now they're set up first and goal at the one. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. They'll try to run this one in, and he'll get in. Touchdown, Cowboys. A great effort there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Cowboys, they push out in front further. Well, the first drive ended in three. This time, they take it down and punch it in the end zone. So that first drive felt like they were just gathering knowledge, didn't it? Just enough to kick the field goal on the first one. And the second time, they put it all together and got it all the way to the end zone. Will Lutz on for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. Scoring summary, three-play drive, and it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Jacobs with a carry on first down as he'll get about three there before he's taken down. Now second and seven from the 23. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Catch is made by Hunter Renfro. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. How about this? They'll try the option, left side. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with the defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. On play action, now Carr. They'll find his tight end, that's Waller. And they're gonna have this across midfield and inside the 45. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone and his quarterback found him and they get a first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Here's Carr to throw. Caught out right by Renfro. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Back to the running game with Jacobs. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm.
final minute now of the third quarter. On first down, Jacobs. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. Now they'll throw with Carr. And Waller taking it in over the middle. We're off to the fourth quarter here in week 15. Happy holidays to all. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. First and 10 right at the 20. Now Carr. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Micah Parsons, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Carr, incomplete. Darren Waller, the intended receiver. And now it's third down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted. And if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage, too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. to three. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute, they want their opportunity, and he seized his. Right now, right now. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time, we give you a look at what's going on there. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago, so they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. And they'll run on the inside handoff. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Operating from the gun, Lowry. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The reception good for seven. It's third down. On third down, it's Day. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 72 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. And that's the type of run that they're looking for because they'll need to continue to rely on him to move the sticks in this tight game in order to preserve this lead. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Day. Divine Diablo there to make the stop. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Polluting the pressure right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Max Crosby, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year.
Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. So possession goes over here on the punt. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out now, joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. Seven yards to pick up there. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Osa Odigizawa has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. The Raiders on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and nine. Now Carr. Short throw, gonna be caught by Waller. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Now after the completion, we're gonna get a timeout, an injured player. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on for the fifth time here today. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. And that's a tired defense out on the field right now. They desperately need a stop to get the ball back to their offense, but they're having trouble getting that done. Another gut-wrenching run right there. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Day, and just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Back to throw now on second and 10. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. throw. Lowry. He finds his man. Complete. That's Day. Good contain. No gain on the screen and it'll bring up fourth down. So unable to get any yardage at all off of the screen there on third down. And ordinarily on third down, that's when you want to bring pressure. You get all your guys who want to get up to the quarterback. But how about the patience they showed? Read the play, snuffed it out, and made a nice stop. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. So Carr and the Raiders now trailing 10-3. A minute 56 to go. 
And they're in danger of a third straight loss as they come up on first and ten. Here's Carr. Gets this to Waller. And able to get this one across the 35 before he's brought down. Carr to throw. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Now Carr. That's into the hands of Edwards. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 35. Oh, now Miller slow and getting up. He's still down on the ground. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. Throwing his car. A short one here secured by the tight end, Waller. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Incomplete. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got to catch in that spot. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Touchdowns are reviewed, and in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good, and we are tied here in the fourth quarter. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Possession of the football going back to the Cowboys. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Clock now under 30 ticks and running. To throw on second down, Lowry. And he'll wind up getting about eight, but the clock will run. Also, don't forget, it's now third down. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. Now we've got free football. Four quarters done, and we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it 
or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. This taken in at the goal line. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Las Vegas' offense back out there, ready to go. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. It's picked up by the Cowboys. And he brings it back to the house. It's a touchdown. And in a crazy inning, a defensive score wins it. So the big fella gets on the scoreboard with a return for a touchdown. Good thing he didn't have to go too far, though. You know the trainers were very happy about that. Imagine having to go get him in the end zone, escort him to the bench, and give him the oxygen. They were loving the fact that he got in without having to run very far. In the National Football League, Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for Dallas, they remain in the hunt for a first round bye as they move to 11 and three on the year. And they'll have another road date next week with the New York Giants. Meanwhile, for Las Vegas, their playoff hopes take a hit as they drop to seven and seven. And they'll try to get back to their winning ways next week as they head to KC to take on the Chiefs. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports. Just so you know, we just wanna get lit. We just wanna get lit. We just wanna get lit. We just wanna get lit, 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 lit. Any, mini, mighty, mo. All this money, I need mo. Don't want your bro. It was for show. Just so you know, we just wanna get lit. We just wanna get lit. We just wanna get lit. We just wanna get lit, 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 lit. Any, mini, mighty, mo. All this money, I need mo. Give him a show, killing you nose and taking your bro. And spinning his bands, oh yeah, did it again, oh yeah, out with his friend, oh yeah, Chanel is the lens. Okay.